Hello guys, let's start our discussion on differential count. Okay, so one good skills that you have to know when performing differential count is one, you know, you must know how to do a blood smear. You must stain it well. And of course, syempre, paano ka makakagawa ng differential count if you don't know how to differentiate your different WBCs, okay? So I want you, since we practiced mag-smear, mag-stain, okay? I want you to practice identifying and classifying your WBCs, okay? So, notice itong mga madalas, guys, itong may mga mukhang um, wormy. Uh, it has multiple lobes, yan. These are neutrophils, okay? Neutrophils yung mga yan. So, um, this one, medyo pa juvenile, juvenile area pa siya na neutrophil. But you could classify it as neutrophil, okay? So, sure ka na, basta ganito yung itsura, um, purple, hindi ganun kalaki, ganun kalaki yung mga granules that's a neutrophil. Ito, bilog na bilog yung nucleus that's a lymphocyte. Wala tayong monocyte. A monocyte is lighter blue yung cytoplasm niya at mas malayong mas malaki at mas kakaiba yung shape niya. So oval, ovalish yung ano niya, yung neutroph yung nucleus niya guys and very light blue. This one, so hindi halata yung pagka red orange niya, but this looks like a uh because of the largeness of the granules. Uh, this is an eosinophil, and this one also is an eosinophil. Notice, napaka-noticeable yung granules nila malalaki. Whatever color you want to to give it, yan, whatever color it was stained, very distinct yung granules niya. Basophil is really covered by granules, okay? I haven't seen uh, basophil in my lifetime sa blood smear, okay? So, nakakita na nga ako sa mga pictures. Ayan, identify ulit tayo. Ito, this is a monocyte. You know because it's big. And it has a very amorphous shape. Ayan, ang laki niya. Dito, hindi ko alam kung ano to. Okay, next. Ayan, this is a lymphocyte. Mukha naman siyang lymphocyte. This one is a lymphocyte as well. These are neutrophils. This is a monocyte. And monocyte yan. Tinan nyo, amorphous yung shape niya. Amorphous. Yan. This la looks like a eosinophil because it's only two lobes and the granules are so big. Yan. This is a juvenile neutrophil or a stab cell. Lymphocyte. Yan. Mukha namang lymphocyte. Okay? Neutrophil, neutrophil, uh, lymphocyte. Yan. All of these ones are neutrophil. This is a stab cell or a juvenile neutrophil. Yan. So, yan. Ganda. Diba? So, guys, itong mga dots na to, these are platelets. Yan. Mga dots na yan. This one. Those are platelets. Okay. So, this is the photos we took from our class. So, this is an eosinophil. Look very very granulated. Yan. Ito. Eosinophil na to. Ang ganda ng pagkastain, no? Sobrang malayong. Hindi, hindi siya purple. Okay? It has a tinge of red. Yan. So, eosinophil tong dalawa. These are lymphocytes. These are neutrophil. Maliit kasi, guys. Nasa HPO. This is a neutrophil. This is a lymphocyte. Lymphocyte, kaya mo. Bilog na bilog, di ba? So, this is also a eosinophil, okay? So, pag natatakpan ang nucleus ng granules, that's basophil. Pero, pag malalaki lang yung granules, that's eosinophil. This is a neutrophil, di ba? Day and night, pagkakaiba nila, guys. So, granulated talaga ang eosinophil. Neutrophil is also granulated, but the granules are not that distinct. Okay. So, when we say differential count, we do both quantitative and qualitative studies, okay? So, our in differential count, our unit is in percentage. 
Okay, so we count 100 WBCs and we classify them. So, naka-percent. So, how many percent are neutrophil? How many percent are the eosinophil? How many percent are the lymphocytes, the monocytes, the basophil? Very rare. Nakalap ng basophil. Okay, so, who? Ah, okay, wait lang. Balikan nga natin to. Sinasabi ko sa mga, so this is a blood smear. Uh, from the student, yan, notice the pallor is kind of expanding already. Yan. Medyo malala. Medyo malaki yung pallor. Meron pang mas severe dyan. Pero that's what what we notice in blood smear is the morphology of also of your red blood cells. Yan. So, what else? Okay. So, we also quantity we quantitate also and qualitate your thrombocytes in a blood smear and the morphology of your <coughs> red blood cells. Yeah, an example, this one is their drop shape. This one, this is called platelet satellitosis, wherein your platelet satellites surround your neutrophils. Yeah, this is a platelet. This is a stab cell or a juvenile neutrophil. And this is a lymphocyte. Okay, so to perform differential count, you know how you should be consistent in the preparation of your blood smear. The stain, you know, you should know how to adjust. Kung hindi na masyadong makulay yung mga cells mo, we count it and we report it. So, what is the source of specimen in preparing blood smear, guys? Ano yung madalas na specimen na ginagamit natin? I'm, I make sure that this is the only tube that I order if ABTA tube, okay? So, the advantage is you could make multiple blood smears if you collect from ABTA tube, not just a finger prick. So, we have methods of how to prepare your blood smear. We have cover slip method yan, for bone marrow preparations, not for peripheral blood uh, preparation. Yan. So, we use two cover slip. Yan. I had the opportunity to prepare a blood bone marrow smear. This is what we did. Yan. So, ganyan rin. Pinagpatong ang dalawa tapos pinaghiwalay. Yan, cover slip method. Pero what we use instead of cover slip are slides. Yan, because it's cover slips are so fragile. Okay? So, it will show the distribution of your leukocyte. So, you have to rotate that. This this needs so much precision, guys. Tinan mo. Yan, kailangan mo i-rotate. Tapos paghiwalay yan. That's Ehrlich's method or cover, cover slip method. We ha also have becomes method. Yan. Some medtech smears like this, they use a cover slip as a spreader. Yan. So you need a very, you know, um, dapat graceful yung kamay mo nga kasi napaka nipis ng cover slip becomes or glass slide cover slip. So glass slide plus cover slip. Instead of a spreader, you use another cover slip. Yeah. And we also have this one. This is what we practice. It's the two glass slide method or wedge slide or push mirror. So guys, note lang, ang ginagamit is a spreader slide. A slide that is talagang different from a, a spreader slide that is for spreading talaga. Okay. So guys, whatever your how you handle your uh, spreader slide. Yan. Kasi since same slide lang naman ginagamit natin, so either portrait yung, yung pang spread mo or landscape, yan, same lang yung size. Kasi, kasi nga, hindi ma, same rin yung ko, slides lang, slide lang rin ginagamit natin not a spreader slide. Okay? So, our angle, it's 30 to 45 degrees when we spread. Yan. Madalas, routinely, yun yung ginamit na. Ginagamit natin, 30 to 45, okay? You could modify your angles. Modifying the angles will, will change, guys, your, your, the thickness of your, your smear. Ako, I'd rather that you would make thin smears because it's quicker to dry, okay? And you have more areas for um, 
for um focusing okay so ang gusto ko para sa akin masyadong makapal tong smear na to but what i appreciate is the consistency i hope you could practice that guys that you would be consistent in your blood smear that it would resemble a blood smear and that you would use it okay so kaya talaga pa blood smear kasi gagamitin mo yan so ikaw rin ang may hirapan kung pangit yung blood smear na ginawa mo okay how they make their smears are smooth like butter. Yeah. So notice the speed. It's so controlled, okay? And I told you, it's like exhaling. Yeah. The speed is exhaling. I mean, suave lang yung pag smear. Not so fast, yeah, not so slow, but just right. Diba? Kaling. Okay, so the wedge or put smear or two glass slide. Yeah. So the spreader slide is 30 to 45 degree. So it's one centimeter away from the edge. So we use two to three millimeter drop of blood. So also assess your drop of blood. If you think that you tend to make a thicker blood smear, di bawasan niyo yung drop of blood, okay? So the hematocrit of your patient could also affect the the thickness of your blood smear. Yeah. Hematocrit, so ibig sabihin pag may anemic, anemic highly anemic yung pasyente, expect na manip, maka, manipis yung blood smear. It's like water sometimes. Yan. So sobrang uh, anemic nila, parang ano, hirap. Hirap gawan ng blood smear, okay? There's not enough viscosity. Spreader slide, I told you, are usually more narrow than the stationary slide, okay? It's clean, smooth, polished, and thin. So that's why sometimes we have difficulty in making our slides because the edges are not smooth, okay? And polished. So there could be holes, okay? And it's beveled. Okay, so the disadvantage is ito makinig. Tendency of larger cells to settle at the feathery edge. Okay, so in making a wedge smear, of course, is not perfect. What you will find in the feathery edges, sa pinakadulo guys, are the large WBCs, the monocytes, the neutrophils. Yeah. And what you will find, guys, on the thick area, are the smaller WBCs, which are the lymphocytes. So notice, mas maraming lymphocytes dito sa thick area kumpara sa feathery edge, okay? So therefore, the advantage is you could find abnormal cells. You know where to find it. Anyway, um, two glass slide is a very reliable blood smear naman. There's also poor distribution of nucleated cells because mo majority of the lymphocytes are in the thick area and the majority of the monocytes and the neutrophil are in the thin area. Okay? Kaya dapat sa saktong gitna lang tayo. And there is trauma to cells. Okay? Notice your feathery edge will, your cells would look, look like they were traumatized or they have abnormal morphology. Tignan natin later. Okay, how... So, the two wedge um, slides or wedge smear. Here is an um, automated way on making your blood smear. So, this one, this is hemoprep or mini prep. Yan. This is not a bread toaster. Okay? So, para siyang bread toaster. However, yun, isasalpak mo yung slide mo. Tapos, lagyan mo ng blood. Let's see. Yan. So, guide lang yung black. Doon mo lalagay yung blood. Tapos parang bread toaster, bababa mo. And then, voila! Yan. A consistently beautiful smear. Yan. Look look at good blood smear. Actually, ang, hindi ganun makakapal. Ha? Maninipis lang. So that you have more areas wherein there is, um, the cells are not overlapping. You make dual smears simultaneously. Ganda. Okay, the advantage, I think the advantage of mini prep is you could do it, do it, you could bring it because it's small. Um, I don't think it's, it has a battery or a plug. Galing, maganda to mini prep. 
smart yung gumawa. This is him as spinner, okay? You could not bring this in outreach if you want to go to place, okay? And it only makes one blood smear at a time, okay? Wala kong video, pero you get the point that when you place your blood smear there, he must spinner, it will spin your slide, okay? Tapos, causing the slide to be covered with a monolayer of cells and it also uses beam of sensor and ikot and to spread the blood e evenly. So even distribution, there is consistency. You have a lot of examination area. Marami kang pwedeng i, i tignan sa under the microscope, hindi ganun ka patong-patong. And the cells are not broken, unlike the two-wedge smear. So, or wedge smear, or push smear. Yan. Nag tend to nagbe-break yung mga cells. However, longer prep, smears cannot be done outside the lab because it's just too big. No specific location for abnormal cells kasi nga even yung distribution. Centrifugal force may cause distortions. Okay. So, Buffy coat smear. Yeah. So, where Buffy coat is this one. So, ano ba nahanap sa Buffy coat? Mga WBCs. So, if you want to examine more of WBCs, you want to see if there are abnormal um, ito, nucleated RBCs sa buffy coat siya napupunta. If you want to see your hyper-segmented neutrophils, pag may, may megaloblastic anemia sa buffy coat ka rin titingin, pagkukuunti ang WBC, sa buffy coat ka rin tumingin yan. So, buffy coat smear is not a routine smear, okay? So, it's very good in ass assessing the morphologies of your WBC skin, especially for those people also have leukemia. This is a thick blood smear, so it's na, it is usually used to check for blood parasites. Yan. So, valaria, filaria, <laughs> Tripadosome. I don't know why and dito yung spirochetes. Yan. Because spirochetes are not inside the, the the red blood cell. Pero yan, spirochetes. Yan. Example of spirochetes are at um, treponema pallidum. Yan. So, pwede yung thick. Ito yung thick. Ito yung thin. Yan. So, parang piso. We will make a thick blood smear soon. So, characteristics of a good, well-prepared wedge smear. So, the length is one-half to two-thirds. So, dapat mahaba, guys. So, should be free of waves, holes, and ridges. Sometimes may ridges because um, the, the smearer has been reluctant. Ganyan. Nag-stop siya. Hindi confident. Diretso. Yan. May stop. Okay, there are ridges, waves, and holes could be the fault of the slide sometimes. Should have a smooth and even appearance. Should be narrower than the stationary slide, okay? So, makapal yung, yung, ano natin, yung smear natin yan. It's not that narrow because we did not use a spreader that is narrower, okay? Must have gradual transition from thick to thin. And it should be thin enough to allow proper fixation, okay? So, have you noticed that thick smears were washed off? Yeah, because it's thick and it was not well fixated. So, it should terminate in a feathery tail and should contain at least in 10 low power field, 50% of the RBCs do not overlap each other. You should find 10 LPF. Yeah. Some, my difficulty on some of your blood smear is there's not enough area wherein the, the, the red blood cells are not overlapping with each other. Okay. So you should see the central pallor. So you, it's a well-stained slide, guys. If nakikita yung central pallor, yung dip ng red blood cell. Ayan. So, this has ridges, has holes. This has ridges as well. There's no feathery edge. Notice. Ayan. This is just too thin. 
Yeah. That's just right. But for me, it's just too thin. Yeah. But at least there's a thick and thin area. Okay, so we, the challenge is you have to find the area wherein the red blood cells are not overlapping, okay? I told you a while ago, expect in the th thick area more lymphocytes and in the thinner areas are your large WBCs, your monocytes, and neutrophil. So in the thin edge, guys, these are the traumatized cell, okay? So they tend to lose their shape when in areas sa super edge na areas sa thin area sa thick naman super overlap yung mga red blood cells at puro lymphocyte lang nakikita and you have to find okay the area wherein the red blood cells are not overlapping okay and you could find the pallor diyan kayo nagsearch okay nag-examine for the differential count okay so you should know the place where to search Okay, so we have the tail, the body, and the head. Okay, look at the tail. Yan. So notice, andun yung mga large WBCs. These are monocytes. Ito. Monocyte yan. These are neutrophil. So look at the feathery edge. Yan. So traumatize yung mga cells dito. Hindi tayo tumitingin dito. Okay, in the area where in too thick naman, hindi mo na ma-distinguish yung size ng yung size, yung shape ng double ng, ng red blood cell, dito tayo, okay? On just right, on the thin areas, okay? So, you could find this under LPO and HPO, okay? So, mag-LPO mag at HPO ka muna, bag pa dumiretso sa oil. Okay, what else? Yan. Yan. So, find the area where it's just right. Yan. Sakto lang. Sapat lang. Hindi masyadong patong-patong. So, this is a neutrophil. Neutrophil. A neutrophil. A neutrophil. I think if I'm not mistaken, this is an LPO or HPO. Okay. So, there are a lot of improperly prepared smear. Okay. So, hindi okay yung may partial drop. Yan. Okay, causes of thick blood smear when you place too much drop of blood, the spread is too fast, the hot, the angle is too fast, and there is decreased pressure. So, lahat mataas pag thick smear. Yan. The effect is the excess plasma causes nucleated cells to shrink. Okay, so you... It tends to shrink and RBCs form a rollo. Then patong patong sila. Stack of coins. Pag sa thick smear, you could not examine the morphology well. Tapos pag sobrang light naman ito, sobrang light because the patient has anemia. Okay, not the fault of the spreader. So too small drop of blood. You spread too slow. Yan, too low of an angle, low hematic rate, and increased pressure. Masada madian. So, expect intense smears, more smudge cells. RBCs become artificially spheroid or distorted shape and the nucleated cells are on the edges. Okay, great appearance. If there are too much nucleated cells, when we use heparin. So, guys, when you use heparin also, the smear would have a green background. Pag in stain mo, too slow or delay in spreading, kaya may stop stop. Use only a part of the drop of blood and the rough edge or dirty spreader slide produces a gritty appearance. Para allowed in this book. Artifacts of smear preparation excess vacuolation, may butas butas yung monocyte. There are reactive lymphocytes. RBC speculation. This is what happened when we use old EDTA uh, blood and doly bodies may disappear on standing if we use EDTA. And doly bodies are inclusion bodies. Inclusion. There could be basophilic granules, drying artifacts. 
Okay, methods of drying your blood smear, air dry, low flame, use the oven. Okay, and immerse in methanol. Staining of blood smear. So what we use was right stain. So right stain is under your Romanowski stains. Right stain is a type of Romanowski stain. So it's a polychromatic stain because it uses two or more stains. So we use methylene blue and eosin. Okay, so methanol muna, eosin, then methylene blue. So guys, um, your eosin will stain your hemoglobin, your red blood cell, and the eosinophil granules because it has a negatively charged and your hemoglobin has the positive charge. And methylene blue, guys, it will stain negative charge substances. Your DNA is negative charge substances because of its phosphate part. Yan, may phosphate kasi yung DNA. It's, neg it's negative charge. So negative and positive. Yan, they love each other. So methylene blue will stain your nucleus. Yan, dun, andun yung DNA. So, okay. Methylene blue. Romanowski stain also has buffer. Yan, so to control the changes in pH, 6.4 to 6. 0.8, the fixative is methanol, and what we use should be distilled water, okay? Because tap water may cause acid um, pH change artifact. So, example of Romanowski is right. So, yun yung ginamit natin. So guys, for the methods of staining, what we did is your dip method. Yan. Dip ng dip. But you could use rack method. This is like your gram staining yung dadrapan. And we also have automated methods. So staining of blood smears. So sales or cellular components. So basophilic. Yan. So basophil will stain your methylene blue, acidophilic. Yan, so it attracts your acid dye, which is your eosin, and neutrophilic neutral. Yan. So, basic siya. So, naghalo yung methylene blue at saka eosin. So, expect that your um, when, once you would stain your blood smear, pag using your naked eye, you could see reddish brown color okay for microscopic expect your erythrocytes as salmon pink and the, there is lightness in the middle which is your pallor okay and this is your platelet it's purple blue to lilac with green 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 purple granules so your nuclei should in purple blue, because of the presence of DNA, DNA is negatively charged. It will attract methylene blue. Cytoplasm, pinkish tan, granules is pink to lilac. Lymphocytes, yan, light blue cytoplasm. Sabi, sinasabi sa mga tanong, it's a robin blue color. Robin's egg blue color. Ang lymphocytes. Robin is a bird. Yan. Pag na may itlog ang robin, color blue. Yan, search nyo. So, lymphocyte daw yun. Monocytes, um, faint blue-gray cytoplasm. It's lighter than your neutrophil. Okay, they are large. Eosinophils has re red-orange granules and it also acts as a pH meter. Perfect yung pH ng, ng stain mo if it will stain as red, reddish, or red-orange. Pag masyadong dark, ibig sabihin, too much na yung, masyado ng basic yung pH ng stain mo. Basophils has dark purple granules na sobrang tinatakpan yung nucleus. Causes of too much red stain, please take note of this. Lalabas sa exam, if it's too acidic, yan, the stain, too acidic buffer, the stain is acidic as well. So, insufficient staining time, excessive washing, and very thin smear. 
Red stain, if there is also contaminant in wash water, exposure of buffer of stain to acid fumes, the stain is old. Mounting the cover slip before drying, it's not completely dry. The process of blue stain to alkaline of a stain to alkaline of a buffer, too little buffer, short drying period, excessive staining time, inadequate washing to alkaline of wash water, the thick the smear is thick, old, hepar heparinized instead of EDTA, high WBC, low hematocrit. So how once we have stain, we have dried. How do we examine your um, smear? So we have cross-sectional or crenellation examination. Ganito yung technique. So pataas, tapos left. So you start on the thinnest area. So mas organized yung ganito. Okay. Longitudinal method. And we also have battlement method. Battlement. Kasi parang ata yung sa, um, yung sa mga kaso. And exaggerated battlement. So, diff two ways yung examination. Two-field meander method. Yan. Please take note of this method. So, madalas ang ginagamit natin. Crenellation or cross-sectional. Okay. So, for the procedure of examining, so double check the identification. If you have stained the, the correct blood smear for the patient, and compare the patient specimen, perform patient specimen orientation, double check if you have smeared the blood smear of the correct patient. So, first use the LPO to scan or review the blood film. Check feather edge for fibrin and check film edges for excessive leukocytes. Yeah. So, actually, ang paggawa ng blood smear, guys, it's hand-in-hand hand with your automated CBC count. Okay. So, your blood smear should confirm what the results from the CBC count. Okay. The edges should contain more WBCs, more big WBCs. So, ito, maraming abnormal, masyado maraming abnormal na WBC in one field. LPO, scan to review the blood film, verify acceptable number of leukocytes, verify the stain quality, examine the, the distribution, the shape, the size of your red blood cells. Okay. So, if there's only 50 cells that you could see, yan, masyadong konti yung WBC count. I experienced this when I was working in, working with the children who has less than one WBC, especially if they have leukemia, tapos nagkikimotherapy sila. So, talagang bagsak yung WBC nila. So, I perform L um the wbc differential count using lpo kasi wala ka talaga mahanap oil immersion examination it's what we do how we perform your differential count you could use estimate your platelets and so yeah look na okay so we count 100 100 cells okay so, oh. so we check yan. So, if the eosinophils is increased, yung basophils mo, yung lymphocytes mo, we check if the lymphocytes is greater than the neutrophils. Kasi normally, mas mataas ang neutrophils kaysa lymphocyte. Yan. So, we perform relative count. Relative count lang tayo pag blood smear. Okay. Hemocytometry, it's an absolute count. So, here is the reference ranges. Yan. Expect na mas maraming neutrophil, okay? Compared sa lymphocytes. So, it's abnormal pag masyadong mataas ang lymphocytes. 
monocytes, we only count about up to 10, maximum 10. The band or the juvenile, neutrophil, mga 6 lang. Eosinophil, 4. Yan. At basophil, 0 to 2. Yan. Swerte ka na kung nakahanap ka ng basophil. So, circulating cells are volatile, it changes. Corticosteroid hormones cause lymphocytes and eosinophil to disappear within from circulation. Saan pupunta yung lymphocyte and eosinophil? They go to the skin instead of the circulation. And epinephrine causes granulocytosis within minutes. So, epinephrine is used in in if to reduce the effects of allergy. So, read on the clinical significance of neutrophil. So, neutrophil Pinya, neutrophilia, eosinophilia, eosinophilia, and so on. Okay, so guys, thank you for joining me. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.